In one of the most recent updates, Lilith changed the Golden Kingdom event, changing up how all the floors work, they changed up all the blessings, they changed up the enemies, a bunch of things have been shifted. So if you're interested in the new event and how it's going to work and how you can push all the way to floor 20 extremely easily, you definitely want to check out the rest of the video. So let's start off with my first tip of the day, and that is to try and clear out the whole entire floor on floor 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. These are really easy floors. The enemies don't have many troops. You're not taking too much damage, especially in the end game. You're really, really not taking much damage. Like you are taking almost nothing. And if you clear out the whole entire floor, you'll notice you're going to get a lot more blessings, a lot more Kuraku gold. For example, I've taken this abandoned chest and I've gotten gold that I might not have gotten if I didn't clear out the floor. So if you're in these early floors, floor one until like six or seven, I recommend just clearing out the whole entire thing. Kill every single enemy, clear every single piece of fog, and you're going to get a bunch more gold, a bunch more blessings, and a bunch more relics. Also, with the first three floors, you are guaranteed to get some type of a core blessing, and core blessings are very unique in the way they work. They come with one very big advantage and one very big disadvantage, so that can be the best thing you pick or the worst thing you pick. The way to know if something is a core blessing is, first of all, the name for it will be in, like, golden writing, and second of all, you'll see that their banners and their outlines are, like, much bigger standouts, and they'll be, like, oozing off golden, like, dust and stuff, and they just... You, you will know when you see a core blessing. They are way, way, way bigger looking. You might think instantly, just instantly take that. Well, you have to know your lineup because you are guaranteed to get one for the first three floors. Maybe the first one you get is not the one you want. There are three core blessings. You got the normal attack one, which is right here, the AOE one, and the single target core blessing, which is really, really interesting. It's basically reliant on the commanders you're running. So if you're running a lot of single target damage, take the single target one. If you're running a lot of normal attack damage, take the normal attack blessing. If you're running a lot of AOE, take the AOE blessing because they're going come with disadvantages and advantages. The Warrior's Hammer, which is the normal attack, is going to make your active skills cost 1,500 extra rage, but you have a 90% chance to launch an extra normal attack every time you use a normal attack. The AoE one transforms all your troops into AoE damage, so for example, Boudicca Prime's active skill is now an AoE, but all your normal attacks deal 50% less damage. And then the single target one makes all your things deal single target damage, but all your skills and normal attacks deal like 25% less damage. So it is important that when you choose a core blessing, it is definitely related to your commander lineup. Also, healing hearts have changed. They now heal your troops with 30% of units instead of 15%. And you have the option to take a blessing. Blessings suck. You can see I took one here. At the best, you're going to get like a epic blessing. And I've taken like five healing heart blessings at this point. Rarely any of them give you something good. So I highly recommend... In most situations, just take the healing. It's going to be way more beneficial to you. The next tip is when you're close to a corner or the top of the map, if possible, try and get things to spawn in the corner. So you can see here, I had a 50-50 chance of a guardian spawning right there, which I could block in the corner. I might get another chance here if I take this block and a guardian might spawn right there and could be stuck in the corner. So make sure that if you're in the corner or up against the wall like this, don't really take those top fog blocks. Try and just get them so that a guardian could spawn up there. For example, right there, you can see I blocked a guardian in. So if you can block guardians in right there, they're not going to affect you at all. They're not going to touch any fog and you can completely ignore them if you choose. So if you get lucky, there is a really good chance you'll be able to block guardians up in the corner, not touching any fog. If you don't click the center fog block, so for example, there are three fog blocks here. I didn't click that center one. I clicked around it and then I clicked the center one so that if a guardian did spawn, it wouldn't block those possible fog blocks. The next tip is with these recruitment camps, make sure you're checking the commander's skills. You can see it's saying every single commander here is expertise, right? Well, if you click info on the Zulang March right here, he's actually not expertise. He does not have his expertise. So make sure you are checking out the commander's skills. I would have taken the Zulang, but now that I've noticed he's not expertise, I'm going to take the Nevsky and Jones. Since it is double expertise, the Guan and the Constantine is expertise, but that is a bad march. So I'm going to go with the Nevsky Joan since the Zulang and the Nebu is not expertise. Now you can see here I got another single target core blessing and I'm not running single target troops so I'm not going to be taking this core blessing but if you are, take the single target core blessing. Hopefully the next floor I get the AoE blessing or I might be forced to take the normal attack one. Now here's the normal attack blessing and it might sound absolutely ridiculous increasing your active skill cost by 1,500 to have a chance to launch an extra normal attack but honestly it's not that bad because every time you launch an extra normal attack you will get more rage. Just keep in mind, though, it is going to be a lot more expensive and much harder to use active skills. So personally, I won't be taking a core blessing this whole entire time because none of them suit my marches. 
I really did want the AOE one. Often, if you do find that this is the case, you don't get a core blessing you want, then just restart. And it will, it's not too hard to blast through the first three to four floors, especially if you got better ping than mine. You'll be able to just blast through and do all the floors extremely easily. So just keep going until you get that core blessing you want. I personally want the AOE one, so I'm not going to take the normal attack one. You do, you do still have a chance actually to get core blessings as you go further in. It is just much lower and much harder to get. Arriving in the Kuraku secret market, which is like the shop you can use your Kuraku gold on, First thing is, I don't recommend Priest Blessing. It's probably the worst of all the options currently available. It randomly restores one of your fallen troops and gives them some HP. Arrow of Truth is probably a little bit bad as well. Minion Detectors, Guardian Detectors, or Elite Guardian Detectors are really, really good. So these allow you to either see the boss, every single enemy on the floor, or they allow you to see the Elite Guardians, the purple ones, which can be really annoying later on when you don't really want to fight them. So Detectors are really nice. Bolts and stuff are better towards the later floors. I don't recommend them in the earlier floors purely because the Guardians on these floors are already easy, but if you find that you're struggling with some bosses, you can pick these up. Personally, I like to stack up on detectors for these earlier floors and use them once you reach the later floors. I kind of just stash up all my relics until I reach later floors. I use forced movement and I use some of the binding shackles every now and again, but, but they are the least valuable of everything. I recommend saving all your DPS and, and all your damage taken stuff for the later floors where they become extremely important to take out bosses especially. The Disc of Destiny has also changed. I've noticed that I've had a much higher chance of getting buffs and the 500 Kuraku Gold, so these are definitely very much worth your spin. I, they're completely free, but whenever you get them, just know you're going to get a few more rewards and you're going to end up with a lot more Kuraku gold purely because of the Disc of Destiny. I've noticed like in my live stream, I got the 500 spot on that like seven or eight times. It's crazy how much I was getting it. So Disc of Destiny has definitely had buff rates just like completely shifted way, way, way better for us players. So that is just an upside to the update that I noticed. Now, another thing with blessings is not only do the core blessings often have something they're related to, some of the normal blessings do as well. So if you've chosen a specific core blessing, let's say you took the AOE core blessing, I recommend taking things that say AOE skill under their title. So for example, this says Saints Graving and then it says AOE skill. If you've taken the AOE core blessing, make sure you're getting AOE skills. If you're taking the normal attack blessing, get the normal attack. If you've taken single target, get the single target. There are also universal blessings, which I didn't get one this time, but what they are is a blessing that pretty much gives you an effect no matter what. So they will not really be affected by anything. They are just something generic, possibly increased troop capacity, increased stats, not necessarily related to AOE or single target damage. They are just a fully generic thing. Also note that the altar of the Kurok actually heals your troops now. It is not just the thing that revives a fallen troop. It heals your lowest HP troop. I usually recommend using it actually after a healer's hut or before a healer's hut. doesn't really matter when, to be honest. Also, if you get double healer's huts like I did here, first of all, you got really lucky. And second of all, you might already have all your troops at max HP. So in that situation, take the blessing from the hut to get the extra little boost that it does give you. As you can see, I just spun the Disc of Destiny. I got another really good thing. So the buff rates have definitely been crazily increased. You will have noticed before the update, especially if you played Golden Kingdom often, you were just getting like 100 Kuraku gold for something and it was pretty much useless. But now the buff rates have been way, 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 way better. And I just think that's a really good change. Going into the sixth floor boss, this is going to be the final floor that I completely clear out everything. As you can see here, the enemies are starting to become a little bit more powerful and it might not be as valuable for me to clear out the whole entire floor. Also, Conqueror is 100% the best blessing you can get. It allows you to literally bring in a whole extra march. So if you get this blessing, rec I highly recommend you instantly take it and just make sure that whenever you enter your next battle, for example, against this elite guardian here, I have to remember to drag in an extra march so that I can use my sixth march because you do actually need to add it. This sixth march can be only from the war camps. You can't actually choose a sixth march from any of your other commanders. They have to be from the recruitment camps. Otherwise, they're going to literally give you nothing. Another neat little tricky is whenever you see an abandoned chest that says your relic capacity has been reached, that means that chest has a guaranteed relic. So I often recommend using a relic so that you can open that chest. For example, here, I'm going to bind this this like enemy and I'm going to take out this guardian minion so I can clear out the fog. But since I binded it, I now have a free relic slot. And whenever I open that chest, I'm guaranteed to get whichever relic it's going to give me. So whenever a chest says your relic capacity has been reached, it's guaranteed to have a relic inside of it. Now, since I cleared out every single floor completely up until the floor 8, I highly recommend that if you get a lot of extra relics, maybe you've noticed you're getting a lot of primitive bolts, primitive bolts again, and a lot of basic armor, use those on the enemies or the boss there just to reduce your damage a bit. I didn't really need it. My troops are literally still on max HP, but if you have a, little, a few weaker commanders, maybe you're on the earlier stages of the game, 
you can afford to use some of these primitive bolts, but I recommend saving elite and like the legendary stuff for the later floors like floor 12 and beyond where it becomes much more difficult. This means though, since I am at the shop and I want to buy some extra stuff here, for example, a standard bolt, I am going to have to delete the primitive bolt. It doesn't mean that much for me since my commanders can pretty much beat this without all the extra buffs. So it is much easier if you're a lower level player to use some of these primitive bolts or some of these basic armors on the bosses to save you from using some of these extra healing things, which may be really good for you as you move on to the later floors. I would also like to mention, I think some people were confused about these. These are just extra blessings. They're pretty much the same as before, except they have a higher chance of spawning. Another thing I'd like to mention, I don't think I've spoken about yet, is as you increase in power, like as your account increases in power, so will the enemies in the Golden Kingdom. So once you hit 50 million power, the enemies will ramp up with, with you. If you're 20 million power, they'll ramp up with you. This is why some players find this as one of the more hard events to complete. I think there is a limit, like once you reach like 100 million power, they stop, they like stop scaling, but they continue to scale with you until you reach around 40, 45 million power. That's what I've really noticed. Next thing, once you hit around floor 11 and above, you will notice these arrow towers spawn. It is essential you gun straight for these because if you don't, you're going to take 1% damage every single time you clear out a fog. So make sure you take these out as soon and as quick as you can. It is extremely important. Once you get to them, all you have to do is push destroy and they'll get instantly destroyed and it will cost you literally nothing. Now you can see I'm at floor 11 and my troops have taken a little bit of a beating. This is because I haven't had a hospital for a little while, but what I can do is I'm full on relics and some of them aren't even healing relics. So I can just move around all these guardians clear out some extra fog with a good chance of getting a hospital, because once I get to floor 12, I have so much Kuraku gold I can be spending at the shop, thanks to the Discs of Destiny, so I can use up some of these relics here, some of these basic and primitive stuff on these enemies, which I normally wouldn't, because I'm going to have so much gold to spend, I want to be able to spend it, so I can reduce my damage when I take these guys out, trying to find a healer hut to increase the HP of my troops. Also, with a really low troop, for example, my Nebu YSG and my Nevsky are getting pretty low, I can pull them out and just replace them with some mercenaries, especially on these lower floors where the mercenaries are like pretty high in HP and they're fairly decent against the enemies. You can just slap them in and they're going to do pretty good. Now that you've reached floor 13, not only do the bosses get more difficult, but you have a higher chance of getting relics and stuff from abandoned chests. So I highly recommend from this point onwards, using at least one armor or at least even two if you get a lot of armor like I did on this floor, I got an extra one. On the bosses, pretty much, you're going to be able to easily cruise through all these floors up to floor 20 if you save your stuff properly and you use it on the bosses. You can see I literally took almost no damage here except my Gilgamesh, so it is really easy to beat these bosses if you just load yourself up with a bunch of extra stat items. Now, floor 16 is a really important shop because this is the last shop you will have access to until you do your final push for the final boss. So, first of all, you will probably have a lot of gold at this point. I've noticed I'm getting way more gold than I usually would before the update because they completely shifted it. Even in my live stream, I had like 4,000 gold and I hit this floor. So, I highly recommend pretty much replacing anything that is not as high value relic. So, if you had a full inventory of relics, I've been using mine up so I could actually do this, then you could just buy out a bunch of relics that are better. For example, if you have any basic bolts, you could get rid of them and purchase the higher relics. Rarity bolts. If you have any lower tier medicines, use them and purchase some of the higher tier medicines. For example, I'm buying senior medicine. I'm going to buy all this stuff here. Also, if there are any detectors inside of the shop, they are really good. The best of them would definitely be the minion detector and the worst is probably the elite detector. These are probably the least important. So if possible, try and replace your, your even up to your standard bolts and your elite armor with minion detectors if possible, since they're going to be really essential, especially with some flaws that I'll show you later on. So if possible, replace it with those. And other than that, just try and fill up your inventory. I'm going to take an arrow of truth just to wipe out an elite guardian if it annoys me. And it should be really smooth sailing from here if you followed all the advice. This is not so smooth sailing. We got hit with a voodoo curse double arrow tower and what you want to do on a floor like this where every single time you touch the voodoo cursed fog you will take 5% troop damage that is really really high. You want to go into inventory and use your minion detector. You should have one by now and then even use an elite detector if possible if you can like if you should since you can see here I'm now able to see literally everything on the map besides the boss and I can just clear the fog leading up to the arrow towers and I can destroy them so they stop damaging me and I can work my way around all this like poisonous fog and then once I find the boss I'll be able to take out the boss. So using those detectors saved me a bunch of possible save units from opening things up like this cursed like poison fog that I would sometimes have to open up if I didn't look with my detectors so I highly recommend using them especially on floors just like the one I showed you where there's cursed fog plus double arrow towers and it gets really ridiculous that's when you want to use the detectors not necessarily on a floor that's just double arrow towers or even just one arrow tower 
definitely on the floors though, like the one that I'm just on right now, is when you would 100% want to use them. Now, a floor like floor 18 is a floor where you don't really want to use your detectors. Even though I said try and use one on every floor, you don't necessarily have to. You can see I'm saving them for the last floor as I have one elite detector and one chief detector. So try and like work around how many detectors you have. If you have like three minion detectors and you hit floor 16, then you're going to be able to use one on every floor and easily get to the end. But if you don't necessarily have three minion detectors, which is quite rare to have, then just try and save them for floors where you really need them. Now, moving into floor 19, this is your last floor. This floor, nothing matters. Floor 20, there are no bosses. So what I recommend on this floor, just use everything. Use your chief detector. Use your elite guarding detectors, use your minion detectors. If you have to use stuff on the enemies, for example, you can just drop like every single armor, every single bolt. See, this enemy is in my way. I'm just going to use my arrow of truth since I know where all the elite guardians are. I'm not going to click them. And then I can just work my way towards the arrow towers. They are still important to take out. Obviously, you're not immortal. So, so if possible, I recommend literally using everything you possibly can to get through these floors. It, it doesn't matter. Floor 19 is the last floor. Once you kill the boss, you're done and you pretty much beat the Golden Kingdom. So you can see that I've killed the final boss. Doesn't matter what blessing I take. I've literally beat it. But I do have a tip. Let's say everything went bad and you were on like floor 18, floor 17. Before you would have to literally restart everything. But now you have three chances to retor return to like floor 16. This floor is going to be pretty much your saving grace. You'll be able to return here. And if everything goes wrong, you'll have the shop again with all your old amounts of gold. You'll have your old amounts of relics. Everything would be safe from before. And you can see what mistakes you made and go through again. I think the enemies will be re-randomized. But you can see here the shop is actually randomized again. So if you get a bad shop, you can return to the floor again and grab a new shop. So let's say right there, that shop wasn't what I wanted. I could return to floor 16 again, and then maybe there's something better in here. I think you have to buy the shop to actually get it to re-roll. So if we buy the shop one more time, return to floor 16, everything's going to re-roll, and then I'll be able to purchase new things from the shop and also it can be used if stuff does go bad and you need to restart. Now, overall with this update, I think it was pretty good. Golden Kingdom in terms of like it being changed is definitely much better now. We've been looking at Golden Kingdom before. Everyone said it sucked. It's really, it used to be really difficult to be honest, especially players, even around my power level. You would struggle a little bit. You'd have to pay a lot of attention to what you're doing. You have to change up how your troops are placed. But until you reach like around 30 million, this event is still going to be difficult. But once you hit like good commander levels, you hit Season of Conquest, you get some of those meta commanders. Really, this event shouldn't be too bad. I'm happy with some of the changes. For example, Disc of Destiny is a, definitely a big one. Like being able to get a lot more gold from it, being able to get a bunch of relics on it. It's not just like an awful show thing is really nice. The enemies are pretty much the same. I mean, they're obviously adding the new commanders. They always do that with Golden Kingdom. But overall, I think that the changes are really nice. The event, it's a bit more smooth now, to be honest. The graphics are a little bit nicer. I did wish that they changed it up a lot more, though. I think that it does need a lot more work to be a fun event. But for now, it is it is heading in the right direction. So I can't complain too much about the event. I think it is going to be a little bit more tolerable now, and it's definitely much easier to do. So I can pretty much just kind of button mash. You get a lot more hospitals on all the floors. You get They heal more as well. You get a lot more blessings, for example, just spawning out in the open. Like, I've gotten a bunch of these. I would only get, like, two of them before. But you can see, like, the blessings I've got now, it's, like, a crazy amount. I wouldn't have had this many before. So... Definitely, definitely a much easier event. Definitely more fun in terms of just being able to blast through it instead of having to sit there for like three hours. I only have to sit here for one hour. So I do enjoy the update quite a bit. And I think that it is a pretty good move from Lilith. Now, if you found this video useful, then let me know in the comments what you think of the update. I am curious. I'm always curious to the opinions of the community about it. Do you think that this was a nice change to Golden Kingdom? Or do you think that this was completely a waste of Lilith's dev time and they should have put it elsewhere? Let me know. I do find that quite interesting. I think that the graphics and all that I like pretty cool. It looks different. It's it's a little bit of a new feel, a new feel for the old thing. So I don't mind it too much. But what is your opinion? Let me know in the comments. I respond to every comment. And I just want to say thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.